Hello friends, this video on chemical coordination and integration part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at the next gland that is the parathyroid gland. So where is the parathyroid? The name itself is it, uh, somewhat related to thyroid. So it is related quite close to the thyroid gland. So it, these are four small oval structures in the dorsal surface of thyroid gland. So if you see, these are the thyroid glands. Thyroid gland has two lobes. So these are the two lobes of the thyroid gland and in each lobe you can see two small oval shaped structures this is one structure this is another structure in one lobe similarly on the other lobe you have two small structures so these structures are known as the para parathyroid glands so they are located on the back side of the surface of thyroid gland that is why they are called parathyroid so the hormone which they secrete is parathormone. Parathormone is secreted by the parathyroid gland. And what is this? This hormone is often written in short form as PTH. That is parathormone. So what does it do? Let us see the function of this hormone. It regulates the calcium and phosphate level in blood. Now in case of thyrocalcitonin also we saw that it regulates the calcium and phosphate level. Now how does it regulate? It increases the level when it goes down. So its function is exactly opposite to that of thyrocalcitonin. In thyrocalcitonin what, is, what it was doing? It was decreasing the level when the, when the calcium and phosphate level used to be very high. In this case it increases their level when it becomes too low. So that means uh, this parathormone and thyrocalcitonin, they together regulates the level of calcium and phosphate. So if the calcium and phosphate level in blood becomes too high, then thyrocalcitonin will bring it down. And if the level of calcium and phosphate in blood becomes too less, then parathyroid gland, or I mean the parathormone will bring it up. So that means the, these two hormones maintain the calcium balance in the body. Now, since it increases the level of calcium in blood, that is why this hormone is also known as hypercalcemic hormone. Hypercalcemic hormone because it increases the level of calcium in the blood. Hyper means more, calcemic is from calcium because it adds more calcium to the blood. So, it is called hypercalcemic hormone. It increases calcium iron absorption from digested food. Now the question was how it increases the calcium level in blood by absorbing more and more calcium from the digested food. So that is how it increases the calcium level in the blood. Next gland is the thymus gland. So where is the thymus gland located? It's on the dorsal side of outer and heart. So if you see this is where the heart is present somewhat here inclined towards the left side. So towards the back surface of the heart is present the thymus gland. And what is the hormone secreted by the thymus gland? It is thymosin. And what are thymosins? Thymosins are peptide hormones. So they basically they contain peptides. I mean if you look at their chemical structures they contain peptides. And what about their function? Now they play a very important role in the immune system of the body. How? They help to develop the immune system. How? Now one of the important constituent of the immune system are the lymphocytes. You remember we, spoke, we discussed about the lymphatic system in one of our previous lessons. So there we saw that the lymphocytes actually help to prevent help the body to fight against any infections. So this, these thymosin hormones help to different, help in differentiation of the T lymphocytes and that is how it provides immunity. So that is one way by which it helps in um, providing immunity or in developing the immune system. So one way is differentiation of T lymphocytes. Now we have discussed what are T lymphocytes and what do they do in our previous lessons. So I will not get into those details. So that is one way. The other way is that it also promotes the production of antibodies. Antibodies also we have discussed right. 
antigen, antibodies, all these we have discussed. Anyways, what are they? These are protein structures which are formed by the plasma cells of blood and they are used by the immune system to identify and to uh, neutralize the foreign materials such as any microorganisms, say bacteria or virus, anything that gets into the blood. So it protects against, it protects the blood against them. So what does it do? It identifies the foreign substances and then neutralize them. So these are antibodies. So these are the two ways by which it helps to develop the immune system. Now it has been observed that in people which are, who are quite elderly, maybe when they are around 70 or 80 years old, when they are quite old, with age the formation of these thymosins is reduced so less amount of thymosin is present in the body now when the amount of thymosin decreases in the body the immune system also becomes weaker that is why you would have seen that if if a person who whose age is say 30 he falls sick uh, his body is strong enough to recover quickly because his body can fight um, against the infections. Also, he doesn't fall ill that quickly because his immunity system is quite strong. But somebody who is very old, maybe 80 or 90 years old, even if you even with small exertion, they can fall severely ill. That's because their immune system is not strong enough. And the immune system is not strong due to the decrease in the amount of the hormone thymosin. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.